What's going on, you all? Coach Reese here, Prophetics Fitness and Athletic Performance. Let's get into the stuff that you've been waiting on this entire time for these boxing lessons. The most important, the fastest, the most effective, and the most important tool in the sport of boxing to any fighter when it comes to punches is their jab. Your jab is the single most important punch that you'll ever have in your arsenal. Not only is it the fastest punch you have, but it's a punch that dictates the pace of a fight, a punch that dictates the distance of your fight, and the punch that controls the actual movement of your fighter and sets every other punch up. A weak jab can mean the beginning or the end of a fighter's career. You've seen plenty of effective jabs from your Floyd Mayweather jab, to your Roy Jones jab, to your currently, in my opinion, Gennady Golovkin, Triple G, has one of the most dominating jabs in the sport of boxing. Without a jab, a boxer can't set up his punches, a boxer can't really measure on the realm of if he can actually, he or she, can actually come back with the other punches that are in their arsenal because your jab is used as your measuring stick as well. If you can't touch a person with your lead hand, there is no point in actually throwing a cross behind it. A jab will let you know if you're in range and actually able to effectively touch your target. So let's get into actually teaching you how to throw the correct jab. All right, so hopefully you are to the point now as to where you've watched my other videos which have showed you both how to stand in a boxing stance and also establish if you're a southpaw or an orthodox fighter. So when you're jabbing, understand that a jab comes off of your lead hand. So if you're southpaw, your jab is coming off of your right hand. If you're orthodox like myself, your jab is coming off of your left hand. So when it comes to jabbing, what you want to do is get in your boxing stance and throw a straight punch down the line. Boom. Notice I'm not flailing with my elbow. I'm shooting a punch. Boom, straight. I'm not giving away my positioning with my shoulder. I'm just coming straight. Boom, that's your jab. Also understand that I'm turning my hip into my punch. Boom, that's a jab. Simple, effective, but must be mastered. When you punch out with your jab, also make sure that your hand is turned over, that it's not straight like this. You want to turn your punches over because if you look and notice, these two knuckles right here are larger than these two. And also these two are lined up with your bone structure coming all the way up your arm. Those two are easy to break. So if you want a solid jab, you want to connect with your first two knuckles on your pointer finger and your middle finger. So you turn up, turn your uh, hand over, boom. Turn your body as well. Keep the opposing hand up. Make sure that you keep your right hand up. If you watch a lot of fighters today, they drop that hand as they jab and they get caught coming in with a counter hook or something over top of that hand. So you watch somebody like uh, Gennady Golovkin, like I mentioned earlier, or Canelo Alvarez, they make sure that when they jab, boom, their opposing hand you can hear it on my face. It's up to protect their face from any other counter. That's the jab, simple. That's an orthodox jab. If you are a southpaw fighter, the same scenario exists, but what you want to do is use your right hand to do so. Make a fist, turn those knuckles over, make sure that they're lined up with the rest of your arm. Make sure that your hip is turned. Make sure that your jab isn't just this. Which one's gonna be more effective? Me just flailing my arm or me putting the body behind my arm? It's an easy question to answer. So make sure that you turn your body, keep the opposing arm up and keep that hip turned with your punch. Don't telegraph with shoulders. If you watch a lot of people shadow box nowadays, they're leading with their shoulders. It's a natural boxing instinct to do so, but if you get out there in practicality and you're actually in the fight and you flinch that shoulder first, you're gonna see that coming, you're gonna telegraph. So what you wanna work on is just the straight line of boom, no telegraph, boom, no telegraph, boom, 
no telegraph. Once you get a good hold of your jab, I mean doing it over and over and over again, I mean hundreds of times, you can actually throw it into what I've already taught you, which is the stepping forward and the stepping back. That's actually how you're gonna keep in touch with your opponent. That's how you make sure that you're in range with your opponent. And if you're getting smothered, you actually keep your opponent off you. Like if such. I'm in my orthodox stance and I'm trying to close in on my opponent, if you look back at my video where I told you how to step in on your opponent, now what you're going to do is a combination of stepping in and using your jab, which is called stepping in using your jab. So what you want to do is push off of that back foot and when that left toe touches the ground, that's where the, where the extension of the punch is. Boom, there. So that's called stepping in with your jab. Notice I still have that turn in my body because that's gonna give me that extra half inch that I need to touch my opponent. So there, boom, step, boom. Step in with your jab, boom, step in, boom, step in. Boom. When it comes to stepping back with the jab, all you want to do is instead of landing forward on your jab, when the front foot tapped the ground, your jab was extended. Now when your back foot touches the ground, your jab is extended. That's how you keep someone off of you. You get an aggressive opponent who likes to come at you and bulldog and you'll meet those should you decide to compete boxing or should a street situation happen and you need to measure them up. Remember, the jab is the measuring stick. So when you step off, boom, you're there. Boom. And then as you retract your left hand, the foot closes back in. Notice I don't close back in here. You never close back into a closed footed guard. You have no balance and you have to reset everything that you just did. So you want to make sure that when you're in your guard, you step back, then right back to your boxing guard. The steps are really small. If you notice when I step back, my steps are small. They're not, they're really, really, really small because if you take that huge step back, huge boom, and I decide to throw another punch, I'm out of range, nothing's gonna connect. So what you wanna do is just use that game of inches, like I told you, centimeters, millimeters. Boxing is that little game as to where you want to make sure that you're still within range to reach your opponent. So you're there. Boom. That's stepping back with a jab. Boom. Boom. Again, I'm not jumping. I'm not jumping up, going forward. I'm not jumping up, going back. I'm staying in a parallel plane. Forward. Forward. Back. 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 That's your boxing lesson for today. I want to keep these short, sweet and to the point right now. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you're practicing it. Hopefully you're going to my other videos for references, the ones that I'm tagging along top of the videos or whatnot. Hopefully you're going back to those. Hopefully you are learning something. If there is something else that you would rather learn or that you have questions about, drop it in the comment section or send me an email. Um, hopefully you like this video, subscribe it, share it with your friends. And also make sure that you go to my website, check it out, www.prophletics.fit. I've got these tanks like this, my other boxing shirts, some shaker bottles, blender bottles, and more products coming to you real soon. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like I said, comment, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Uh, you got any grievances or whatever too, you can send those, feel free to send those as well. All right, have a good one.